as a youth pastor the last eight years at some of the largest churches in America, I've learned some key lessons in connecting with and leading Gen Z students. And not to sound arrogant, but I know some things. For instance, I know that teenage girls fall in love about five times a semester. I also know that for junior hires, Fortnite is not just a video game, it's a lifestyle. And I also know that the social media app TikTok is the universal language for students everywhere. However, one thing I didn't know was how to lead young people through a pandemic. The COVID-19 crisis took the modern world to a space that we had never been. Not only did it shut down businesses, close schools, and demand that people stay inside their homes, but it also forced churches, temples, and synagogues all over the country to close their doors on their members. The sacred spaces where millions gathered each week to pray, worship, learn teachings were suddenly no longer available to them. So during the first global pandemic of the 21st century, one that instilled fear and panic into an entire nation, people in the faith community were seemingly left with no place to go to find hope. The church had essentially left the building. However, as a result of this mass exodus of physical congregants, a new wave of creativity and connection was ushered into the evangelical church through the utilization of live stream technology, an enhanced focus on social media, and with more pastors preaching TED-style sermons, the reach of the local church spread far beyond its four walls and instead became a global community. And while some churches struggled to adapt to the new normal of online-only services, a research study done by the Barna Group found that 44% of churches that went fully online as a result of COVID saw a significant increase in attendance. And with no large gatherings to prepare for, many churches focused even more on providing much needed essentials for their communities, whether by converting buildings into food banks or by providing much needed counseling to the drastic influx of people who are struggling with depression, addiction, and abuse the church readily responded. With hundreds of students from my youth ministry stuck at home during quarantine, I needed to find a creative way to create engagement and community. So I launched a virtual youth conference on Instagram called, wait for it, Quarantine Con. We brought in musical artists, movie producers, and speakers from all over the country, and it was a massive success. Over 2,000 people from eight different states and five different countries all logged in. It was as if the crisis had forced us to reach a new level of creativity, and we had finally found our footing in the midst of the chaos. However, COVID-19 was just part of the story of 2020, because America was about to face the darker side of its proud history, and the church would be needed to shine brighter than ever before. During Memorial Day weekend, 2020, the video that shook the world was released. A white Minnesota police officer was recorded killing an unarmed black man who was already lying face down and in handcuffs. The outrage was unparalleled and started a global response of protests and reactions from all over the world. As a black youth pastor who leads at a predominantly white church, I felt a strong sense of responsibility to utilize my voice and platform to bring awareness and change. So when our church was able to safely regather, the first message I shared was on how Christians should respond to racial injustice. I played the horrifying video of the murder of George Floyd to my students, and I challenged them to not just see a stranger or random black man lying in the pavement, but to see me, to see a husband, to see a father, to see a community leader. Because the truth is, every time I see another black man killed by a police officer, I see myself. I shared my story with them and explained how racial injustice is a sad reality that I had personally experienced multiple times, even within the church. I shared that the reason I needed them to envision me lying in that pavement being slowly suffocated by someone sworn to protect me is because you will not show a passion for those you have no compassion for. 
And then something happened that I'll never forget. I gave everyone a moment to just pray and self-reflect. And during that time, a young white woman came up to me. She was shaking uncontrollably with tears filling her eyes. She said, Justin, all my life I've been raised in a very conservative family, and we totally support the police. But I never knew what it was like to be you. I'm so sorry for everything you've been through. I'm so sorry for everything. She then hugged me while sobbing for several minutes. And it was in that moment that my faith in humanity and the church was renewed. Because I realized that even in the midst of chaos, the church could still bring hope. Even in the midst of outrage, the church could still show love. And even with millions suffering from unjust systems and practices, the church could still fight for justice. COVID-19 proved that people in a healthy community will always find ways to grow, regardless of the environmental restrictions. And the racial justice movement gave the church an opportunity to not just talk about Jesus, but to walk like him. How ironic is it that through a global pandemic and racial justice movement, the church would discover a deeper understanding of the message that Jesus Christ had communicated over and over again in his teachings, that the church was never designed to be a religious organization, but rather a relational organism. Because even when people can no longer come to church, they can then become the church because the church has left the building.